All right, I think everyone is in. So thank you everyone for being here. My name is Dave Williams. I am part of the admission staff here at Simpson College. And this session is really geared towards Greek life at Simpson. Okay, so we've got a lot of information about what it means to be involved in the Greek system um, here at Simpson College, what those opportunities look like. Um, we'll probably spend 15, 20 minutes just kind of covering some of that information. And then I will go through, you know, maybe five minutes real quick of just general Simpson admissions information. And then we'll, we'll save all of your questions to the end. So I'm joined here by Lainey Fight, who's also part of the admissions team. Lainey will collect all those questions that you guys enter into the chat, and then he'll pose those to the students or to um, anyone else that's, that's involved in this as well. Um, I've got Rich Ramos, who is going to be kind of leading the discussion tonight, and Rich has brought along two current Simpson students. We may have one more joining us later. So at this point, I think I'm just going to go ahead and kick it over to Rich. He'll kind of run through this presentation, and then again, we'll jump back in towards the end um, with, with some questions and Q&A for you guys. So Rich, it's all yours. Sounds good. Well, welcome, and thanks for being here tonight. Um, First off, I'm Rich Ramos. I work in the Student Activities Office. Um, if you want to go ahead and advance the slide, Dave, that'd be great to that first um, slide. Um, I work in the Student Activities Office and work with a number of different clubs and organizations. But one of the areas that I work uh, closely with is our fraternity and sorority life. Um, and with me tonight, I have two students and I will start off and let them introduce themselves um, maybe not necessarily disclose what their chapter is because I don't want to, if you're going to start in the fall, I don't want to have you, uh, think that these are the only chapters that they, you should join. So, um, Katie, let's start with you. Can you guys hear me? My microphone sometimes doesn't work. Okay. We're good. So my name is Katie Warwick and I am the vice president of recruitment for the Panhellenic Council here at Simpson College. I'm very excited. And Abby? Uh, my name is Abby Ruby. I'm the panel and president of Simpson College. So we oversee all of the sorority life here at Simpson. Great. Dave, if you want to go to the next slide. So I'm, I'm going to run through these relatively quickly so that we make sure that if you have any questions, you have ample time to ask. And so that Abby and Katie have um, some time to talk a little bit about their experience in fraternity and sorority life as well. We have eight Greek letter organizations here on campus. We have four women's chapters, Delta, 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 Kappa, Kappa, Gamma, Pi, Beta, Phi, and Sig Sigma, Lambda, Gamma. Um, all of our chapters, with the exception of Sigma, Lambda, Gamma, have a pretty long history on campus. Um, Sigma, Lambda, Gamma has only been on campus about five or six years, and they're a multicultural organization, and we're really happy to have a multicultural organization here on campus. As far as our men's chapters go, we have three men's, cha men's chapters, Alpha Tau Omega, Lambda Chi Alpha, and Sigma Alpha Epsilon. And then just recently, Kappa Theta Psi has changed from being an all-male chapter to being a co-ed chapter. So there's an opportunity there um, for involvement um, for both men and women in the same chapter to be a part of a, a community organization. As I said, all of our chapters have a really long history on our campus. Um, many of our chapters have been on campus for well over 100 years, and it's important to understand that um, they're on campus at the invitation of the college. So they just didn't plop down here because they wanted to be here. Um, they're here because we feel as though there's a value to having them on campus, and, and they, they bring a lot to our community, and we're real proud of what they bring. And um, as a matter of fact, we just most recently had a recruitment meeting with um, several of our women's chapters to kind of prepare for the fall and when people show up to, to hopefully get them encouraged in fraternity and sorority life as well. Um, let's go to the next chap uh, slide, Dave. So all of our chapters, they focus on a number of different things. All of our chapters real strongly uh, base things on uh, academics. Um, all of them have an academic standard that they're expected to live by. Um, and it's, it's not unusual. And actually, it's a regular occurrence for our Greek chapters to have a higher GPA than all of our unaffiliated students typically 
Um, on a regular basis, it's not unusual for our Greek GPA to be well above the general student population or the all student GPA. And this semester, the fall GP, Greek G, all Greek GPA was a 3.230. So um, we're real proud of the work that they do. Like I said, they all have a standard and they all have an expectation of um, all members to join a chapter. Every chapter has maybe a slightly different standard, just so you're aware. The other piece that's a part of our community um, is community service. Every single one of our chapters has a philanthropy that they're affiliated with, and they regularly do community service for those organizations. What you're seeing here in the picture is um, from a couple of years ago when we had a normal year, um, not a COVID year, but a normal year where uh, as a part of Greek week, which is a week where all of the organizations um, come together to celebrate everything fraternity and sorority life. And part of what they did was um, a community service project, making those tie blankets and um, with the intention to giving them to organizations that were in need and needing things like tie blankets. So community service is a big part of it. If you go through at least the, on the women's side, one night of women's sorority recruitment is focused purely on uh, philanthropy and community service. And um, a, a lot of our chapters do a lot for a lot of different organizations. Let's go to the next slide, Dave. Um, it's also about sisterhood and brotherhood. I think we talk a lot about um, you know, connections. A lot of our students who choose to join an organization um, find a real connection with those men and those women who have joined their chapters. A lot of the times when um, we talk about in recruitment, we talk about students finding their home and uh, those people that they're gonna have a lifelong connection with. And it's not unusual when they leave Simpson after joining a fraternity sorority that um, they maintain a forever connection with those women or those men in whatever chapter they choose to join, but they also get a lot closer with the other alums who've had that same experience in that chapter down the road. So it's not just purely the four years that you're here, that connection with those folks is going to last a lifetime. And I've been at the college long enough to see it that um, it's a regular occurrence for students who've been in Greek organizations, still have a connection 10, 20, 30 years or more after they uh, join their sorority or their fraternity while they're here on campus. So sisterhood and brotherhood really means um, not just the four years, it's a lifetime sort of thing um, for these men and women that join these chapters. Um, as far as campus involvement, I think a lot of people also come to campus worried about can they do all sorts of different things. Um, and my guess is Laney and Dave will probably tell you the same thing that one of the things that makes Simpson special and great is that you all can be involved in a lot of different things, and you can be connected in a lot of different ways. In our fraternities and sororities, we have students that are campus leaders in a variety of clubs and organizations. Um, we have our student body president and vice president are currently uh, a member of a fraternity. We have athletes, they get internships, they're academic leaders on campus. Um, it's it, the best part of a place like Simpson is it allows you those opportunities to do a variety of things. And I think a lot of people, like I said, get concerned that with Greek life, you that's gonna take all your time. Um, as Katie can probably tell you, she's involved in more than just uh, her sorority. She's involved in a lot of other things. So um, it, it, it allows you the opportunities and the time to be involved in a multitude of things. And, and I'd like to think that almost all of our chapters encourage their students to be involved in a number of different ways here on campus. Uh, and then the last thing I, I want to really hit on before I turn it over to Abby and Katie to talk a little bit about their experience is recruitment. For women's recruitment, it's September 10th through the 12th of this year. And for men's recruitment, it's September 13th through the 16th. Um, so that you understand there's, there's a big difference between how women recruit and how men recruit. Uh, men are considerably more informal of a process and it's come and hang out, get to know the guys, and maybe play some video games, eat some pizza or grill out or whatever, and that's kind of good. The women have a very much more structured sort of process, and it, um, it works well for them. Um, I would encourage any student to go through a sorority recruitment. 
Um, even if it's one of those things that you're maybe on the fence on, I would still encourage you to do it because it's a great opportunity to meet not only other people in your class, but it's a great way to meet some other students here on campus and connect with the campus in, in a different sort of way. Um, it, I think that there's another concern that if a student goes through fraternity or sorority recruitment, that uh, it means that they have to join a fraternity or sorority. You don't have to join a fraternity or sorority when you go through recruitment. We'd love you to join, but we also realize it's a, it's a mutual selection process. Much like when you were um, choosing a college and looking at a college, um, it's, you're looking for a place that has, feels right to you. And the college is also looking for students that are going to be a good fit for the college. Um, it's sorority and fraternity recruitment is very much so a similar process. And um, it's about finding your home and connecting with the people that fit with you. So, but I would encourage any student to think about the recruitment process um, when, when they're looking to, to, to an activity or involvement here on campus. Um, it's a three-day process. It's a pretty simple and painless process. And like I said, I would encourage anybody to think about that. Um, sign up for, if, if you're coming in the fall, sign up for women's recruitment. We'll start June 1st. And um, I would encourage you to reach out and ask any questions possible. I know that Dave and Laney can um, share my contact information. I'm happy to talk to anybody if you have any more questions about what the recruitment process looks like. Um, it's a little bit, I can go into a little bit more depth than we have time here. So, um, but with that in mind, I guess I'll, I'll throw some questions to Katie. And if you all have any questions, please feel free uh, to ask. I'll throw a couple questions to Katie and Abby. Um, why did you all choose to join um, your chapter or go through Greek recruitment? I guess the main reason I chose to go through recruitment is because I had actually a lot of friends go to Iowa. So I was really like, hesitant and then one of the nice things about Simpson is it was actually free so my friends at Iowa had to pay a hundred dollars just to go through the process and here it was completely free so I was like I have nothing to lose at this point and being like a first generation college student I had no idea what it entailed and I kind of had the bad mentality that it was not affordable but as I went through I realized like they make it really available to all students and the um we have rogamas that help you through the whole process so you're not just alone during it and my role giver is very transparent about that process. So I felt very welcomed. And then I just kind of fell in love with some of the girls and I chose my house. And here I am overseeing all of them at this moment. So. Yeah, so I am my first year this year. And so I decided to do recruitment this year because there wasn't really a lot to do this year. And so I I came into college wanting to do recruitment anyway, but it was one of the things that was still in the schedule. And so I added it to my schedule and I ultimately could not have been happier. I love my house and I love my sisters and I love the other houses and the friends that I make there too. So I, one of the slides mentioned a little bit earlier about opportunities for involvement. What other things are each of you involved in um, or do you do or work outside or that sort of stuff? Um, and, and how easy is it to manage that, that Greek involvement? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, so I am involved in my Greek house, the Panhellenic Council, Student Government Association, Pre-Law Society, um, and I'm a UGA now for the religious life community, um, along with being a full-time student and living here on campus and doing all my homework and getting it all done on time. So it's very, it's very possible. And it's, if you put your mind to it, and if you love what you're doing, it's definitely worth it. And you will be happier with like your choices if you are dedicated to what you want to do. Um, for me, I've just been involved in, I've hold multiple positions in my house. So that's allowed me to obviously get leadership experience. And then I've also gone to different events. So I've done like dance marathon with some of my girls. And I've also, I just do a bunch of random things. I'm kind of blanking out. But since I'm a junior now, I'm kind of thinking about the long term involvement. So I actually have been in an internship this past semester. And I was working over 30 hours while being a full-time student and being completely involved on pan house side and this side. So, and my house this side, and it's completely doable. Um, honestly, all of our houses understand like 
it's a time commitment and it, there is sometimes where I've had to take a break and that's the one thing is we're not like mad that if you need to like take a week off or if something comes in the way like art like Rich said our academics come first so it's definitely something that we all are able to do and succeed in other activities. So I, I'm guessing a lot of people hear a lot of stereotypes about Greek life and, and hazing and they hear all the negative things about fraternity and sorority life. What what can you guys say about that and uh, your experience here? I know, Abby, you've been here a little bit longer than Katie, but um, what would either of you say about that? Um, it's not like the movies. And it's definitely a way different community here on Simpson since we are so close and such a smaller campus. I actually know a lot of the girls in all the different houses where my friends at Iowa who are in the same sorority as me on a bigger campus, they actually can't say the same thing, but the hazing is completely false. And I know um, from Panhel, we have a like a umbrella called like NPC. And I know they take those standards really strict and stuff. And across all campuses, it's nothing we stand for. So don't watch, don't listen to the movies. Yeah, I wanna echo what Abby said. Definitely don't listen to the movies. You can watch them, they're fun to watch, yes but don't listen to them. They're not what you will get out of your experience in sorority or fraternity life. Um, here at my house, when we come over for dinner, when before we're initiated, we're not even allowed to do our dishes. So like, it's not, there's no hazing, like they stray from that very much so. So it's, it's a good community that we are in. Awesome, and then the last minute or two before I turn it back to Dave and Lainey, um, what would you tell, why would you tell anybody to join a fraternity or sorority at Simpson? Either one of both of you. Um, I would say the connections is like endless. I love connecting with people and I love to network. And I didn't realize there's sorority life all over like the whole United States. And I think it just brings people closer and you never know who you're going to run into. And I just think it's a great opportunity, especially here on Simpson, because it's very affordable and it's able, it's available to anybody that I think it's not an opportunity that like you would not be disappointed in. And I just think the connections, the leadership experience, like I came in super scared, super timid. And like, here I am grown into a junior. I was able to get two internships this summer. And I don't know if I would have been able to do that without those girls in my house and the other communities pushing me to be better. So Yeah, coming into a year of COVID, it was definitely... A You're a little soft, Katie. I don't know. Sorry. Okay. Coming into a year of COVID, it was a little difficult because there was a lot of uncertainty, but this community just brings you in and they support you every step of the way. While the connections are great, I think the support system is just amazing. I don't think you're ever alone, and I think that's amazing for you every step of the way. <laughs> and, and just before I turn it over to Dave, I, um, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of our students and a lot of our students in our Greek community, and um, I echo what they say about all of the pieces that I've seen as the person who works closely with with our Greek students in the community. Um, I, I hopefully that if you come to Simpson or when you're here in the fall or whenever you come, um, that you give our Greek community a look um, and and consider being a part of that organization, those organizations. Um, they they do a lot for a community. And as I said at the onset, they're here because we see a real value in who they are and what they bring to our community. And, um, and, and the connectedness of the alums long after they leave Simpson, um, it, a lot of our alums who have been in their, in their fraternity or sorority are still very connected and still very engaged as a part of our alumni community here on campus. So um, I, I hope you'll consider it and uh, keep it in mind. But with that, I'll turn it over to Dave. And if there are any other questions afterwards, we're happy to answer them. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Um, before I go into my piece of it, I just want to remind everyone, if you do have questions, certainly just type them in the chat. You can send them directly to Lainey, and then he will kind of relay them to everyone else. But Lainey, before I go into my part, do you have any other questions that have been sent to you at this point? 
for the students? Yeah, so um, I had one that came up that um, it was how can Greek life help me with my life after Simpson College? I guess um, I can speak on this. I know within my certain house, we actually have a Facebook um, group. So it's every, I, I have to remember, I can't say my house due to panhell rules, but it's all of the chapters within that house. And people post like, oh, I'm moving to Cincinnati or I'm moving to Ohio. Does anybody have any recommendations? So like, that's one piece is there's like always people across the whole United States. But I think after college is like a lot of these girls, like I, I'm going to be friends with still and when you live in that house and you share like the same house with the same girls like you're bound to just like develop those deeper friendships than what you would develop with some of the people that you're just passing by on campus and it just brings us really close so I think it's just that long-term friendship those connections and also just like those leadership skills that you don't realize you're building but when you become older like I am you kind of look back and you're like oh wow I grew so much and I didn't even know so Yeah, so one of the largest parts, uh, sorry, one of the largest parts of a sorority is the alumni chapters that are very, very involved in the collegiate chapters. And so you will never go a week without hearing something from your alumni chapters. Um, and so you have those connections. And if you say you're a part of like one, whichever house you decide to go to, they'll be like, oh, I was a part of that house. That's really cool. I graduated at this time. And then you just automatically have a connection and they will like vouch for you. And it's really cool. And, and I know that um, over the years, I've seen alumni help students get internships. I've seen them help get jobs. Uh, they've helped with housing when somebody has been in a city that they're new to, but they happen to know another alum who is living in that chapter or in that house, that city that uh, can help and they'll put you up or they'll at least help you find housing. So um, it's a pretty vast, extensive network and it's um, they help far beyond Simpson and further than anybody really thinks they do, but they help with a lot of things. I think about, I think it was about two weeks ago, I was talking to a student who got an internship uh, in Des Moines purely because he happened to know he'd be a member of a specific chapter um, whose alum happened to work someplace else and they hooked him up with somebody else. So uh, that's, I think the connection I think is really probably the biggest piece beyond Simpson. Everyone probably just saw my five-year-old make a quick appearance. That's a COVID life for me now. So Um, lady, any other questions before I kick it off though? No, that was the only one in the chat for now, but there might be more uh, when we get to the end. And so, uh, yeah, like I said, guys, don't uh, feel free to put whatever questions you have uh, for Dave and I or for anybody else, um, and we'll be sure to answer them. Well, so what I'm going to do is, again, just kind of hit some of the highlights of Simpson College for some of you, you may have made the decision that Simpson is where you want to be. Some of you may just be starting the process or right in the middle of making that decision. Um, so I'm just going to show you some kind of infographics, some information about why Simpson can make a big impact and, and be a really good decision or a good fit for you. So these are some of the highlights that we really sell to prospective students and incoming first year students as well. Some of the things that I always like to talk about, though, is Cost is always a big piece of this for students, um, whether that's a, a, the most important piece or a smaller piece, but it's always part of the equation, right? So it's always good to know that 100% of our students, once you're admitted to Simpson, will receive some sort of academic scholarship. We are really focused on your GPA and what you did in high school, because that to us is a better indicator of what type of student you are and what type of student you will be at Simpson. So once you're admitted, you get a scholarship and you can see the range there in the bottom right corner. That is the minimum amount you receive just upon admission to Simpson. Everything else, if you apply for additional scholarships, anything you get from the FAFSA stacks on top of this. So I think Simpson does a really good job of making it as affordable as possible um, because we really wanna make sure that if Simpson's where you want to be and if, if it's the right fit for you, that we make it financially feasible. 
So that's just one of the things that I always like to highlight for, for, for prospective students. And the other thing there you can see is 99% of Simpson grads were employed or in grad school within six months after graduation. Uh, I get, Lainey and I get this question a lot is what makes Simpson better than other schools? Well, the one thing I'll tell you is we really focus on prepping you for life after college. It's weird to think about, but you know, it really starts the day, you're, the first day you're on campus is what is your career goal? What is, what is that next step for you? Well, let's develop a plan to help you get there. Because in the grand scheme of things, you, you got to remember college is only four years. So it's a very small part of what will be your life. So again, we really want to make sure that you are going to have all of the tools necessary to be successful in life after Simpson. And our faculty do a great job. Our career development office does an incredible job as well. And so that's one thing that I really highlight to all students I meet with is we will make sure you are ready for whatever that next step might be. So if you are still in the process or you're just starting the process as far as your college search goes, always the most important thing that we tell students is you have to visit campus. And I think Katie and Abby, you guys can probably, you know, just vouch for this is that is the most important thing when it comes to your college searches. You've got to get on campus. You've got to talk with some faculty members, talk with some current students. If you're interested in athletics or any extracurriculars, you can meet with coaches or people in, involved in those organizations as well. But I think that's really going to paint the the best picture for you and allow you to get a true sense of what Simpson can offer you during your four years. So if you haven't visited, set those visits up. Simpson offers on-campus visits, even throughout COVID, we still met face-to-face. -face, and we do offer virtual visits for students that maybe are a little hesitant because of COVID or maybe you're out of state. So that is an option as well. But either way, set one of those visits up so that, again, you can take a deeper dive into what Simpson has to offer you. Obviously, our website is, has, is just a huge amount of information on our website, so check that out. You can learn a lot about academic programs, what classes are required for specific majors, learn a lot about like groups and organizations, um, just campus life at the, at the moment, what that looks like. So check out our website, do a little bit of research, and just you know take some time to look at the things that are really important to you. And then for seniors or upcoming seniors, rising seniors, always remember that October 1st of your senior year is the very first day that you can fill out your FAFSA. So if you apply during the summer or beginning of your senior year and you're admitted, make sure you get that FAFSA in as early as possible. Again, that starts October 1st because once you've been admitted and we have your FAFSA, that's when we can really start diving into what that cost is going to look like. To attend Simpson. So again, fill out the FAFSA and then get that application in. One thing to note is Simpson is test optional, so we don't require an ACT or SAT. As I said earlier, we're really focused on what your GPA is, what classes you took, and how well you did in those courses. So our application probably takes 15 minutes. It's free. It's on our website, so pretty quick process there. And then you can actually send your transcript to us or have your counselor send that over. And then we'll get start admitting students sometime this, this August, more than likely. So application first, and then get that FAFSA in October 1st of your senior year, and then we'll re really be able to take those next steps for you. So again, just ran through some, uh, some fairly important information pretty quickly. If there are any other questions, definitely just type them into the chat to, to myself or Lainey. We'll get those addressed. Lainey, did you have any others that came in while I was talking? Yeah, so there was just one more. Um, okay. It was specifically pertaining to Greek life and research. So the question was, can I participate in research uh, at Simpson while also being involved in Greek life? Yeah, I, you can. A lot of our seniors for their senior capstones will do research at the end. I mean, I'm only a junior and I just completed a 30 hour internship for the last six months. So it's definitely doable. You bet if you have be if you have better time management skills, that's definitely something you have to learn at the beginning, but it's definitely doable. I mean, you can do anything at Simpson with Greek life. That's like one of the one things is 
there's endless opportunities to get involved in everything. And the nice thing about Greek life is there's always somebody who will go with you because we're all over this campus. So you'll know somebody in, some, in one of the rooms. Awesome. Well, I just want to say for, for those prospective students and families that are listening in, thank you guys for taking the time out of your busy schedules to sit and learn a little bit more about Simpson. Again, we'd love to have you come visit. So if you haven't done so, please set those visits up. You can do that directly on our website. To Rich, to Abby, to Katie, thank you guys very much for being here and representing the Greek life system here at Simpson College. Again, I appreciate your time as well. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and end it. Um, I hope everyone has a great evening and enjoy your, your Tuesday evening and hopefully we see you on campus soon.